My name is Ben Domain, Managing Editor with Westford Community Access Television, and I'm here with several members of the Westford Coalition for Nonviolence, because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I'm going to have all of you ladies introduce yourselves. We'll go clockwise, and I'll start with you, Gail. Hi, I'm Gail Johnson. I'm the public health nurse at the Westford Health Department and the chair of the Westford Coalition for Nonviolence. I'm Allison Christopher, and I am the social worker for the Westford Council on Aging and the town of Westford, and I also am a part of the Westford Coalition for Nonviolence. Hi, my name is Jody Marshan. I'm also, um, I also work with uh, Westford Coalition for Nonviolence, and we also, um, I'm founder of the Live for Live Foundation, a foundation that was started due to the death of my daughter, a victim of domestic violence. And I'm Pat Rapucci, a community volunteer for the Westford Coalition for Nonviolence. All right, great. Thank you all. Gail, I see you have some notes. I know we're going to be uh, talking a bit about the organization. I don't want to lose the ball here. So can you tell us a bit about the, uh, the org? All right. Well, I will read from my notes then. Um, so the Westford Coalition for Nonviolence is made up of members that include town employees, residents, victims, or survivors, and other community partners. And the mission of our um, coalition is to promote healthy relationships and foster a culture of nonviolence for all members of our community. Great. Thank you. And can you just, I guess... How do you all sort of fit into that puzzle piece? What exactly is your role in promoting nonviolence? So for 13 years, this coalition has been um, going on and, and being strong. We're a small group, but we are continuing with our education outreach. And as you had just mentioned, Ben, the October is um, to the National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so we are partner partnering with you for um, letting us have this um, moment to um, speak on the podcast. Also, in addition, we're also um, working closely with the J.V. Fletcher Library. And for the many years now, they have put out books in the periodical room on domestic violence and um, for so adult books on domestic violence and for bullying for children. So they do that for us for the entire month. And also, I just wanted to mention that the Westford Coalition for Nonviolence has developed a handbook. It's a resource book, and that's a free resource that can be picked up at the Westford Health Department or the police station, Cameron Senior Center, and the library. And it's a resource booklet. It's only for information only. And we've so far distributed 1,000 copies out into the um, community, which is amazing and wonderful. Um, and lastly, um, this is our second year using the big top party rental. They're called the Christmas Light People from Tuxbury, and they are the ones that put the purple lights on at our gazebo at the Town Common. And the purple lights are, um, they represent the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So um, when you see purple lights, and also in addition to that, we also have um, domestic violence signs that we're going to also put around the common as well, just so that we can um, pay tribute to those that are um, victims and survivors of domestic violence. Sure, that, that all sounds great. Allison, can you talk a bit about your sort of role in this big, this big puzzle? Sure. So um, I was asked to start coming to the coalition meetings over the last few years. Um, and it's just been a great place for me to get to know other um, staff and uh, partners and community members who care about this issue. As a social worker, it's something that is part of my practice, not daily, but probably at least monthly. Um, an issue may arise with a client that is exploring whether they're really feeling safe in their relationship or not. Um, and so it's important for me to, to be connected with the group and to feel like I'm on top of what resources are out there so that I can refer my clients to. Um, you know, I like the fact that when I'm working with people, they feel safe enough with me to start to explore this issue. But I also recognize that 
I can't be an expert in every topic that someone might be experiencing in their life. So I kind of serve as a resource point for people that are coming to see me, whether it be the senior population that I work with mostly um, or the younger adult population that might come to me because of some um, financial or life hardship. And then there may be an issue around domestic violence that is driving those financial hardships or um, connected in some other way. So I I often am referring folks to Alternative House. I'm often referring folks to Jody's organization or to one of the other local charities that can support um, my clients financially if they are needing to make changes in their lives related to domestic violence and they're finding that hard to do because of financial barriers or all of the other social barriers that people face when they're trying to do that. Absolutely. I um, Monthly seems like a, a fairly common occurrence for an issue that's probably seldom talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, you had mentioned some resources um, like Alternative House. Can you tell me a bit about that? So Alternative House is one of our partners in the coalition, and they come to the meetings regularly and help us to um, kind of revise our resources, help us to provide the most up-to-date information. But because that is an agency that it's all that they do is work with domestic violence survivors, um, they just have a wide range of services. They have um, short-term shelter arrangements for people. They have financial resources, legal resources, counseling resources. They have a 24-7 hotline. Um, So it's really a place where people can call and then be screened and figure out what are the things that they might need from that organization. Um, And I really like to refer people to places that are kind of one-stop shopping where they can get court advocacy and... um, you know, housing assistance and everything within one umbrella. Um, I think that can be really useful to people who are struggling so they don't have to jump around to a bunch of different places. Absolutely. And I think you primarily mentioned um, that you work with seniors, but I just want to be clear, you'll work with pretty much anyone in the Westford community, right, regardless of their age? Absolutely. Any adult in Westford is eligible to come seek my services. I think that because I'm housed in the senior center and, um, you know, started out working primarily for the Council on Aging, I have a strong connection with the older adult community. So I think it tends to be more likely that they seek me out in these situations. Um, But I want any, uh, you know, anyone to know that if they are having an issue of any kind, that they need brainstorming about supports or Um, referrals or information or just someone to vent to or talk to that that is my role in town yep awesome thank you I just want to bounce over to Jody now because you had mentioned Jody's organization and Jody had spoken a little bit about live for live can you tell us a bit about that hi thank you Um, as many people know or may not know I'm a victim of domestic violence Um, 2010 my husband shot my daughter and I was also shot in the head. He knew he was losing control and wasn't going to have it. For years it was not physical abuse, but emotional abuse, power and control. And when he knew he was losing control, that was he wasn't gonna have it. So since then, the Live for Live Foundation was founded. Her name was Olivia. And um, and we also will help victims uh, very often fi- uh, financially in various ways. Um, I recently actually had a call from someone um, that was working with Alternative House, and due to the fact probably they have different grants, uh, they had some money they needed, and I was able to help that victim. There's often uh, attorney fees um, that we're able to cover, Um mortgage payments, various things like that. Um, and also I do speaking and I finally was able to get into, uh, the seniors, um, at Westford Academy because I was 19 when I met my husband. So they need to know the signs because as you mentioned, the numbers are staggering, staggering, and no one likes to talk about it. So I'm 
thrilled that we are here and that the Western Coalition for Nonviolence is talking about it. Well, you mentioned some of the signs, and you kind of alluded to it's it's not always physical. Can you kind of go a little exactly. further on that? It's so much about control. Um, financial, uh, very often, I know I was um, a mortgage lender, so I was very, um, you know, I would fight for my clients to get approval, but then, then I would go shopping and hide the price tags on my clothes so he knew I hadn't been shopping and didn't know what I spent. Um, that's... And that's mild compared to some of the, the uh, women, or for the most part, women that work and very often um, have no control over the funds. Um, so that's one example. Other examples are, you know, all of a sudden, well, f- for instance, for, for young people, as I mentioned, um, now if someone's texting you and you're going out with your friends and he wants to know who you're with and what you're wearing and where you're going, and when will you be back, and call me when you get home. And you you mistake that for, you know, it's funny, it's a jealous guy, my boyfriend really likes me, where no, he wants control. And there's so many signs, but things that I wasn't aware of, although you might know something's not right. And But that's why it's so important to talk to young people so that they can see the signs and very often I, I'll get one of the students that will say I know someone um, and you know they don't want to hear it or whatever and you know I just say all you can do is let them know that you're there for them and at some point they may they may come, come back to you for some help. Absolutely and I think we had briefly spoke about uh, before we started this um, you held your annual Ride and run event. Uh, Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, thanks. Um, Yeah, Uh, when the year anniversary date came up, I wanted to do something fun in her memory. And the Ride for Live started, which was, you know, two bike rides, six mile and a 23. Since that time, uh, we've added a 50 mile bike ride as well as a um, 5K walk run and 10K as well. Um, so we'll probably keep it at those activities now. But um, And then we also have a – so it's a great day. It's it's that plus a, a, a raffle, a silent auction, a DJ. Anyway, the amount that we raised was um, – it was about so far we've re- figured forty five thousand. That's thanks to sponsors in the town as well as surrounding towns, and I thank God for that um, because with that we're able to help people um, and hopefully eventually come up with some sort of temporary housing mm-hmm. uh, for someone that needs somewhere to live while they wait for a house to be sold or they wait to get trained for a job. That's my goal. That's a very aspirational goal. That's that's great. Thank um, you. If someone wanted to donate, how could they donate to you? Well, we um, we're on a website, mm-hmm. uh, Live for Live, L I V E F O R Live L I V dot org, and so they could donate that way. Um, and we take um, also we're at P O Box seven five eight in Westford, um, and I greatly appreciate you a- appreciate you asking because it really does. Um, we do cover help in so many ways. Absolutely, and I'm sure every little bit helps. Absolutely. Sure. Now, Gail, you had mentioned a bit about uh, the book that the coalition puts out, and I believe Pat is the one who uh, writes that. Is that? Am I correct about that? Oh, well, thank I God for Pat. It. Updated it. Can you tell us a bit about it? Um, yes. It's, what, three by five? Um, and... As Gail had said, there's a lot of concrete information where to get help, and it also goes through different scenarios. And when you're out in the local community, people, I've heard this said, there's no domestic abuse in Westford. And I, and I have been asked questions. People know you're part of the group. Um, so that's an educational opportunity there. And the handbook I've passed out all over the place. I keep it in my car, actually. Um, Mm. So, yes, it's updated. We now need another update. And also explains that domestic abuse runs the gamut. It's just not male on female. And as we noted, the numbers are staggering. And then I did a lot of um, research um, the LBGTQ community, those numbers are rising. 
So it can be anything, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're being beaten, but um, that does happen. And so I'm of an older age group where that was never mentioned. And then as time has gone on, people will tell you stories, you know, the same age group, and you just become horrified of the type of lives they actually had to lead. So um, hopefully I'm a resource when I'm out there with the booklet and I send many people Allison's way. So if they have questions, need help. And, um, and I like that we partner with Alternative House and you get to see how all that is run. And I've actually referred someone there as well. So within the community on your travels with whatever group you're in, it's amazing the things that come up or the stories that come up. And then you're able to point people in a direction for help. Absolutely. So you're able to, you know, get them the help they need. But it seems like um, my understanding is you're sort of acting as a liaison for a lot of the seniors in the in this senior community. Is that that actually has happened, that, yes. I really feel like having a senior like Pat who is out socially with so many people, you know, not every person is someone that I've already worked with or who knows me or who feels comfortable with me and is going to come to me on their own to share something difficult. So with domestic violence and with a lot of other topics related to aging that are difficult to talk about, I feel like Pat is really helpful in knowing how to guide people to the support. Um, and it doesn't always mean that because someone comes to me that that means that they're deciding at age 85 that they're going to get divorced or that they're going to completely change their living situation. You know, I don't want people to fear that if they come to talk about something, that that means that they have to make a huge change in their life. But there are so many things that we can do around safety planning, around strategies for how to make someone's life better, even if their choice is to remain in a situation that they've been in for their whole marriage um, or relationship. Um, there's just a lot of different ways to go about it that we can help someone to be safe or safer or, you know, to do the things that they choose to do at whatever point they are in their relationship. Absolutely. So it seems like the goal here is really to to build trust among uh, folks in the community who might be struggling with uh, and, and survivors of this. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, this is all very great. Um, in terms of any other resources, do we have any other things that you know, we can link back to and, and refer people to? Well, actually, now that you mention that, we are um, actually today, I'm hoping that um, the um, uh, we have made little cards. So these little cards are due today, I think. I'm hoping to pick them up. Um, and they're going to be placed in bathrooms. Um, it's really, and, and not just um, women's bathrooms, but men's bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Um Domestic violence, as we just discussed, runs the gamut. And um, these little cards will be placed in holders and we'll displace them, you know, put them, um, distribute them rather, um, around town in all different places, hopefully in the high school and the middle school. And um, really, that's just another resource. When you had just asked uh, Jody, what are the other signs of? You know, besides physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional, psychological, verbal, financial, spiritual abuse, neglect, bullying, gaslighting, digital abuse is now a huge abuse um, through all of those Facebook and Instagrams and all of the other um, mechanisms that people use to, um, you know, commit violence uh, through a, a digital way. And it's really this resource book um, does, you know, have these highlights, these little definitions in the book. Um, and it's just really important that we continue to raise awareness of this. It's not going away. 
Mm-hmm. Every moment on the news, you just turn the news on and all you hear is domestic violence incidents. And we're a small coalition. And if all we can do is just make little cards and booklets and do podcasts and, um, you know, put purple lights on the common and let people know about it, then that is what we do. So I really thank you for having us here today and for the J.V. Fletcher Library for putting out the books. I appreciate them as well. And everybody who's really all the members of this coalition who we meet quarterly and sometimes even more than that. And really everybody's support um, is necessary. So thank you. Absolutely. It, it seems to me that, you know, half the battle is really just spreading awareness. Um, and I think my, my sort of takeaway is it, it doesn't always have to be physical violence. Violence can be, in, you know, come in several other forms, which is uh, well, it's terrifying. But, you know, mm-hmm. um, getting the word out and, and, and uh, you know, helping folks is, you know, really the best we can do for sure. Great. Is, is there anything else anybody else wants to add that we might have missed? Jody? Well, I just, I need people to know it is not, they want to, nobody wants to talk about it, first of all, which was mentioned. And it, it happens in all, uh, you know, they assume, uh, people assume it's happening only in, say, low-income areas, but it really is all, you know, it's all economic, all racial, all, you know, every, you know, sexual preference. It's it's literally all all relationships, and it really is. You know, we really don't hear about on TV and that October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's not a happy subject. People don't want to hear about it. We hear a lot about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is extremely important, of course. But you know, um, it's it's really upsetting to me that that people don't want to talk about it. So I appreciate the fact that this group is so amazing and every bit helps. And I thank you. And our pleasure. And if anybody were to need help, I guess I'll point to um, any of you guys, how could they reach you? So I am easily reachable in my office at my uh, direct line, which is 978 399-2325 399-2325 or through the main number at the Cameron Senior Center. And I'm also available via email from the town website. I just suggest that people only write their name and phone number and that they want to talk with me and not anything too personal in their email. I am um, so Gail Johnson and I'm the Westford Health Department um, public health nurse. So G Johnson at Westford M A dot gov G O V nine seven eight three nine nine two five four eight is my direct line. And the Live for Live uh, Foundation, our email is live for live two oh one oh the year that everything happened at gmail.com. Um, I can probably be reached at the uh, Cameron because I'm in there most days and um, it'd be best just to ask for me. Great, thank you. And I just want to add a little bit, you kind of touched upon it. Uh, If it's a westfordma.gov email, it's generally subject to the public records law. So just something to be mindful for if you're reaching out by phone is usually uh, the best bet if there's sensitive information. Exactly. A little, little journalist. Oh, thank bit. you. That was yeah. a good. Thanks for clarifying was, yes. why I said that. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're right. Talk of is, um, yep. Generally mm-hmm. speaking, um, <laughs> but yeah, no. This this is all great, and uh, all of these emails and numbers we listed in the description, and we'll make sure to uh, include any relevant links uh, as well. But uh, all of you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.